In this video, we'll look at how you can use the app to design and make to create your own Tudor house. You can also use this app to create many other 3D objects which you can print out and assemble at home. To find the to design and make app, click on the tools section and then on the right hand side you'll see to design and make. Once you select on that icon, you'll be taken to the home page where you can choose some pre-made examples of 3D models. So this one has some transport vehicles, we've got homes and angels, we've got some masks and then we've got some 3D shapes. Now for today, I'm going to make my Tudor house using the pre-created house model. So I'm going to select that and press OK. I'm now taken to this area where I've got my pre-formatted house shape. As you can see here, I've got a 3D model that's being sh that's showing me all the different sides and edges that I've got on my, um, my model. If I just click on it and drag, I can have a play and just have a look at that 3D object in all angles. And if I click on it, it will freeze and stop in that position. Up here, I can see the net of my shape. And in this main panel, currently, I've got the different points that you can see for my house. Now, if I just show you, I'm just going to leave my house 3D shape looking like this on the right hand side. If I alter by clicking on these points and dragging them, you'll notice that my net and my 3D shape are now updated with the edits that I've made with my points. So any alterations I make by dragging points, making maybe the roof a bit longer or a bit narrower in the middle here, gets automatically updated in these other windows. If you would like to add some more points to help you manipulate the shape, click on this icon on the left, the plus icon. I can now click on the lines and you can see that I can have as many different points as I'd like. If I want to reduce some points, I can click on the minus icon and I can click on the dots I want to remove. OK. OK, so once I'm happy with the shape of my house, it's time to get decorating. So I'm going to make a Tudor house and I've done some research. Um, I've looked on the internet as to the different styles of Tudor houses with the, uh, the timber frames and the colours and the roofs and windows and doors. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decorate it. So you can see on the left hand side here, I've got my different coloured pens. And if I click on it and drag, I can access some extra colours as well. I can choose whether my felt tips are thick or thin nibbed. And also you can see I've got a fill tool, I've got a pattern tool, or I can use circular or square lines as well to fill in my shape. So what I want to do with my Tudor house is I want to choose some black timber frames that go up on the face of my house. So I'm going to choose the square one here and I'm going to click and drag. As you can see, as I'm doing that, the nets and the 3D shape are showing my pattern as well here. So I'm just going to do a few more of these. I'll check back in you in a moment when I've done a little bit more. OK, so now I've added all of my vertical themes. I'm going to um, put a couple of windows in. So you might want to be quite precise. Now, you might want to add some extra details that we know about the Tudor Times, for example, the diamond um, framed windows. So you could add lots of more diagonal lines if you like. But just for now, I'm just going to show you how you can insert some of the main uh, features for your house. There we go. Right, so as you can see, I've got my net here and I can see how it looks in 3D on this side as well. Now what I'm going to do is I want to colour my roof in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the net tab and now I'm viewing the net of my shape. Along the top here, you'll see I've got a slider that allows me to zoom out or zoom in as to best view my net. Now what I want to do here is I'm just going to scroll down and have a look at my roof tiles. Now it might be that the age and stage of your child, it might be hard for them to configure which uh, part of the net corresponds to which different part of your 3D object. So they can just have a click about and play. For example, I want to just fill my roof with a brown colour. 
So if I want to check whether this is my roof um, face for my net, if I click on it, I can see here that, oh dear, no, actually what I've done is I've painted the side of my house. So if I undo that now, then it will, it should in any moment go blank. And then I can move along my net here and I can fill in the correct sides of my net. So if I check here, I've done the roof and I can now leave the sides to be adding some um, vertical beams just like the front. So I'm going to go back to my beam tool now. Now your child may automatically start drawing them vertically like the front of their house and they'll soon realise, oh actually that's now coming horizontally on my house so I need to rotate it. So they can undo that drawing and then they can, oops, they can recreate it in the correct orientation. As you can see, we can then build up the different colour beams on the front of the house. So I'll come back to you in a moment when I've finished that. Okay, so now I've, paint, I've uh, decorated both the sides of my house and the back face is blank. So if I go down to the bottom panel here, I could, if I want to add some more um, uh, vertical straps in black, or I might want to give it a black colour if I'm going to place it against a wall. So for this one, I'm, I'm aiming that I'm going to print this out, I'm going to assemble it and I'm going to put it on my shelf. So in this instance, I'm going to leave my back face here blank. However, if you would like to decorate it or your child would, feel free to use this area. As you can see also, I'm leaving the underside of my house blank because I'm not going to actually see it. And if I'm going to print this out, I don't want to use up too much ink, so I'm going to leave that blank for now. Now looking at my design, I'm quite happy with the shape, I'm quite happy with the colouring. However, I feel I might put some vertical um, stripes into it. So if I go back to my point one here, I'm just going to add a couple of, whoops, I don't want to change the shape too much. Now if this dialog box does appear, like I've just done there, I've accidentally clicked on the point, you get warned, you might lose some of your drawings if you continue. If I press OK, you'll notice that my net design here has then, all my hard work has disappeared. If I click undo, then you should see them return. So worry not if that does happen to you, but just be careful like I've just done there, try not to, um, to click and drag your points too much once you've started designing it because you might come across that error as well. Okay, so yes, I want to add a couple more lines across here. Um, so I might make want to make some uh, diagonal lines. In this case, I'm going to click on the pencil option here, and I'm going to make my nib size a bit thin here, and then I can add some diagonal patterns. Oops, a bit of a wiggly mouse. I can add my diagonal patterns here. On the side if I want to or through to make some crisscross patterns and so on. So whichever design you would like to, to make with your um, with your pen tools, your drawing and paint tools, you can have a real play around with it. Press undo if you're not happy with something in particular and make it as authentic as you would like it to look. So in this case I'm just gonna go like that. Okay. Okay, so now I'm happy with my design. I'm going to double check my net to make sure everything's where I want it to be. Again, I've left these blank because I know that when I print this out and assemble it, I'm going to have it against a wall. So the base and the back of my model, I don't want everything on. Uh, this time is when I can just double check I'm happy with what it looks like. And now, finally, before I print it out, I can see that I've got some tabs here along the faces of my shape. When I print out my Tudor house, these tabs will be printed as well so that I can easily glue and assemble my 3D house to make it look as close to this image here in the 3D preview box. What I can do is in the top left hand corner, click on the menu option. Once I've saved it, in this case I'm going to call it Tudor house. I'm going to click save and then I can either print it directly from here 
to my home computer, cut it out and assemble it. Or I might want to share it with my teachers, send it to a display board or blog about it by clicking on the share icon. Finally, you'll notice there's an extra option at the bottom of the menu, which gives me the option to download it into a um, file that is compatible with 3D printers. So if you're lucky enough to have a 3D printer, you can actually get your model printed out in 3D ready-made for you. I hope that's been informative and gives you some ideas as to how you might want to use to design and make with your child. Happy purple mashing.